And good afternoon, um, Torg Eternity fans, um, Torg Possibility War fans. Uh, this is kind of an update video. This has to do with the nights before Christmas. Now, from November of 2020 through, I think it was the end of October uh, 2021, we were we played, uh, what was it, 24 game sessions of an adventure that was only supposed to take, like, one game session. Only one! The, uh, the gentleman who originally came up with the adventure, uh, Blair Krantz, uh, had to hand it off to me because of various things that were going on with COVID at the time. And uh, uh, because of COVID-19, they lost a lot of people uh, at his work, and he had to he had to make up for a lot of what was going on, or you know, the loss of all those people. The goal of this video is to tell you why I am not processing the nights before Christmas like I uh, processed. Uh, like I process all of the rest of the videos. Um, number one, a general overview of Nights Before Christmas. The idea is um, uh, four wizards, uh, alteration, conjuration, um, uh, uh, divination, and apportation uh, at the, the College of Magic, the Magic Tower in Oxford, England, are kidnapped. They disappear. They just go somewhere. How did our knights get involved in this? Uh, there was a plane crash that was caused by a Draconis Metallica um, over the ocean while they were in that airspace uh, over, over Britain, which of course has been taken over mainly by Isle, the, uh, the realm of Isle. So Draconis Metallica causes a plane crash and then it comes to roost on top of the jet um uh and of course they're 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 pretty heavy animals um so you know there wasn't going to be much they could do to get that animal off of there well they tried uh they tried military solutions and they tried uh negotiation solutions and everything like that i don't know how many negotiators got eaten i didn't figure that out um but in essence, after about um, after about 24 hours, after everybody on the air, almost everybody on the aircraft was saved um, uh, and shipped off to London, the Draconis Metallica uh, left. It just left. Okay, so the uh, the military there were trying to rescue things from the belly of the aircraft, get the black box out of it, uh, things like that, get get our Storm Knights gear, but our Storm Knights were without their gear, okay, and that, that's how Blair set it up before he had to, to, to take a powder. Now, again, this entire thing was supposed to last like four hours, okay, and, and the idea was overall to rescue Santa Claus, Okay, the four wizards turned out to be four different aspects of Santa Claus hiding away from Angar Uthorian and from the Gaunt Man. Uh, and the best way that they could do that was through magic because, of course, Santa Claus is who? Santa Claus is made of magic. Everything that he does, it can be done by magic. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't believe in magic, it can be it, it could be technology that is so far advanced that it looks like magic to everybody else. Doesn't matter. Okay, same uh, same outcome. Okay, so our our, our player heroes wound up uh, going around uh, uh, various parts of England. There there was a large track uh, that I'll be presenting eventually uh, to to show you guys what the travel was like. Uh, to get around and do these things, uh, but I am we like I said we had 24 game sessions, which produced 63 hours worth of footage, for what I estimated would be about 58 one-hour sessions, okay, or one-hour videos, okay, because I'm trying to keep our videos on this channel to an hour or less. 
Uh, some of them have gone over an hour, uh, but I think it's only like two of the videos that I posted so far. So what I'm trying to do is take game sessions in their entirety and I'll break them up into three chunks because we usually only play about three hours uh, on any given night. Uh, and, and that was true uh, during nights before Christmas because we switched over from Saturday nights to Sunday nights because of scheduling and everything like that. If, if you're a game master and, and you have ever had to schedule your gaming around your players, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Okay, so um, I also don't really want to produce all of, go through and produce sessions based on the 63 hours or almost 63 hours of recordings um, because I was still very much learning how to use OBS Studio. I'm still learning how to use it. Uh, Shotcut, still learning how to use that to, to get the videos out. Um, so during that time, uh, the, the uh, Roll20, I think we started the game on Roll20 and then we carried it over to Foundry VTT. Uh, and there were tech issues out the yang with that, uh, whether it was my internet, and, and I'm blaming myself first here, I'm going to take into account everything that I may have done, whether it was crappy internet, or it was uh, uh, a 15 year old game system or 16 years old uh, uh, computer system that I had at the time to work with, or whether it was stuff that was coming off of this laptop that I'm recording on now. Um, there were a lot of tech issues, a lot of, of, of image problems, uh, a lot of music problems, a lot of, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. Well, I, fin I finally feel like I'm at a point now where I can kind of take all of that and, and make it sing a little bit better than I used to. So, um, that's how the tech issues affected it. Affected it. Um, also, we have a pretty massive backlog. We have two complete adventures for Torg that have not been edited yet. Now, I just finished editing and uploading the final three videos for uh, Theft of the Moon for the One Ring to to my channel, um, to our channel. Um, and I'm getting ready to start on Curse of the Gaia Bolga probably Monday. So the, today is Tuesday, so in six days. Okay, I'll start editing Curse of the Gaia Bolga. Fortunately, I get to start out with two uh, episodes instead of three. Uh, that'll make things a little bit easier because I really am trying to get caught up on stuff. Uh, so yeah, there's a backlog of videos, a pretty good sized one. Uh, and the time it takes to edit is is larger than 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 you might think now i don't know if it's just me not having the the proper skills to edit things quickly or if it's a matter of my my friends god bless you all uh chewing chips uh while microphones are active or drinking Ugh. that's the worst sound in the world is somebody drinking over a microphone um uh, or whether it's uh people talking over one another so much that it's hard to discern what's going on. It's hard to separate it. Even if I get control of the table, um, you know, whatever it was, all of that stuff has to be caught out um, or cut out, cataloged. Uh, I have to determine, you know, what parts of a video need to be cut out or what parts of a video need to be saved and then the audio just needs to be cut out or, or muted or whatever. Um, I have to go through and determine all of that stuff. So even with our, our most recent several months of videos now, okay, so probably since the beginning of 2022, uh, my, my friends have been doing great on not eating on microphones or, or, um, or on video or, or whatever. Um, now we, I just need to get them to be more disciplined about turning their, their, uh, you know, unmuting themselves <laughs> when they, when I need to get an answer from them. Uh, it's a process, you know, it's a process. Um, so, Anyway, when we started with the audio stuff back in 2020, um, when, when we finally decided, I think it was in April or May of that year, that we were going to, to actually record our videos and stuff like that, I had to start with the audio because we had thought originally to go ahead and do the um, 
uh, the the video or the audio as like a podcast, okay? And I'm not sure it would have been any better than it is now. At least you get to see something now. Um, so we decided we were going to go ahead with video because video is actually smaller, a lot smaller than audio for some reason. Maybe it was the, the what I was recording my audio on or whatever, but I didn't have really anything to edit it for except an, a video editor in Shotcut. So I went and put together, started putting together things in Shotcut. I was like, well, let's put some images here and let's do this. We can get a smaller thing out of it. And it turns out that the video of all of the audio session turned out to be one sixth the size of the audio by itself. Okay, so we're talking say 300 megs for an hour of recording. And, and that's not terrible quality. It's probably not the the, the best television you've ever seen, but it's not bad quality. Okay. Uh, anyway, working our way from all of this, all this new program stuff, uh, all these new utilities out there up till now, um, I hope you've been able to see all of the improvements and whatnot that go with it, but with the improvements come different ways of working. Okay. And some of those ways of working take more take longer than old ways of working um, until I can at least find something to to get all of that down so any swear words that I have to cut out uh, any uh, you know any uh, bad descriptions any argument unnecessary arguments any uh, any unnecessary dice rolls things like that I have to go in and cut all of that out now whether it's just muting or cutting the whole, a whole section of the video and audio out that's I'm I'm good with that now but an hour of video recorded typically takes two to three hours to edit it and 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 get it all down uh, yesterday I, I told you I did um, uh, theft of the moon uh, the the last three hours for theft of the moon the original video was three hours five minutes eight seconds and it took me 12 hours to get everything edited and then to to get it uploaded uh, which is an excessive amount of time but I, I did it so that I could get it done so that I could move on to other projects which is what I'm saying with uh, KBC uh, the nights before Christmas I, I will not be putting out more than like a special or something like that I'll get to that in a minute uh, okay K, uh, nights before Christmas place in the war um, it ta the entire adventure takes place in post-invasion Isle, okay, or as a, a friend of mine online said, Azel. I really like how that sounds, Azel, um, but I know it's, it's called Isle. Uh, it happens in days 102 to 131 in 2017, which was the what I consider the original invasion time of the war. Um, uh, so day 102 to day 131 to finish up... Uh, nights before Christmas. So if you see dates that are past 131 from here out uh, for uh, Curse of the Gaia Bolga, for um, uh -huh, that other adventure that I ran, whose name I, I don't remember right now. Um, and then what we're doing with uh, um, Relics of Power Trilogy, the original Relics of Power Trilogy uh, uh, Part 1, the Destiny map right now, um, I you know, you'll you'll see that there there's just a whole lot to be done, um, and 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 those dates will take place after KBC. KBC remains in its spot, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. Um, okay, on top of all of that, there are a lot of projects coming up. Um, for one thing, um, uh, the Destiny map is only going to be three acts instead of four. I'm the the fourth act has always been incongruous with that adventure. It takes you all the way to India, okay? But it doesn't give you a story for how you get there, okay? Uh, at least not one that's thorough enough to to give me a, a thing. So I am going to be writing a a one act adventure that helps transition over to India. It, it may be a it may be a two act adventure. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I haven't even started to write it yet, but I call it the Relics of Power Interlude. Now, I do plan to run the Relics of Power Redux, but I wanted to run this one first. And, and there, you'll figure out why I wanted to run uh, the original, uh, apart from the fact that I love the campaign. 
um, before I run this other one. Okay. Uh, now, look, Ulysses Spielas, folks, did a bang up job rewriting uh, Relics of Power Redux. I, I definitely want to run it, but I also know that except for a little touch and go here, it is completely separated from the original Relics of Power. It, it, it is Relics of Power in name only. Okay, uh, It's got a similar premise, but the specific actions and stuff are completely different. Okay, So I will be running that, but it's going to be down the road. Um, okay, there's that. Um, I've got to build the new Storm Knight journals for our current group. Uh, I was going to do it post Foundry version 10 release. But um, I, I think I'd better just go ahead and get it done and then deal with whatever fallout comes after version 10 is actually released. It's supposed to release tomorrow. I don't think it's going to release tomorrow. Uh, nor do I think it should be until everything is worked out uh, in, the, in, in the interface. Okay, uh, I need to shoot an actual introduction and update video for our, my YouTube channel, uh, Role Playing in the Wolf's Den. Uh, let's see, I've still got to program all kinds of items and effects from the various books. I am, I am still back on Delphi Missions Rising Storm. I'm like 12 pages from the end of that, but I've got all of these other books that I want to get, source books and everything like that, and I want to get them programmed in there myself because I'm very, very, very picky about how I do things. Anyway, I need to rebuild the journal uh, coding system that I have. Uh, I want to make it simpler for my players so that all of them can, can mark down all of their stuff and have a secret area to put stuff that they want to keep secret for their characters. Um, I've got two adventures from uh, um, Delphi Missions Rising Storm that I want to build for the future. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what they are. Nah, 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 nah. Um, let's see, I, I need to figure out how to live stream. Okay, um, I'm sure it's probably super, super easy, but this is me we're talking about. Okay, um, uh, my Realm Runners at Large team, the ones that uh, that I wrote before the dawn uh, after, the, the novel that is on the Infiniverse Exchange, um, I am going to be writing a second novel, and I need to get all of their stuff put onto their own instance of Torg Eternity, okay, so that I can run them individually, so that I can, I can sit there and, and write stuff. I got a secret for you. I'm actually playing through these dice rolls and everything okay the dice rolls are true the card play is true everything in in the game is correct okay according to the rules and then I, I write the novel and if something interesting comes up some kind of a failure or something that's just fodder <laughs> I can I can I can write on I can hack on that all day long um, but I want to be able to write good stories, and that requires me to have this process. So eventually I'm going to be getting that done as well. Um, let's, uh, we, we've still got stuff in other gaming life. Torg and The One Ring are not the only two games in the world that I do. Um, uh, I, I'm pl uh, playing in a live Dungeons & Dragons group right now with my friend Remington uh, as the GM. Good job. Um... Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying myself with that, and I'm thinking about starting up a second night to run uh, a different game, probably the One Ring First Edition. Uh, second Edition isn't sitting right with me. There's some things that, that, uh, that, that a lot of the changes are really positive. They're really good, but the changes don't work well with actually telling a good story. Um, for me, for me. Okay, let me clarify that. Uh, as a GM, I am particular about how things run. Uh, okay, so that's the special project. Okay, so finally, uh, getting kind of towards the end of this. Yes, it's been 22 minutes so far. Um, the nights before Christmas, if I can ever get to it, I want to do it as something like a special. Uh, do you remember when I did Popes in Space and... Um, uh, you know, the, the, the two adventures, um, the... Um, uh, 
the day two adventure that David Chart wrote. I, I don't I don't have it written down right here. Of course I don't. And my memory is for Kaka because I I'm not on my meds, dude. Anyway, um, those three adventures, uh, my friends and I did a a uh, a recollect, recollection or highlight video for each of those. I want to do two one hour highlight videos if I can, if I can, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to do you know I'm going to find highlights for for all six from all 63 hours and compress it down to two what i'll do is once that's done i will put a link on this video that will allow me to to point you to that video okay um or those videos so that you can watch them and kind of get caught up um you kind of know the outcome uh, which is the Storm Knights 1 uh, with Santa Claus's help. Uh, you know how things more or less began. Um, the A couple of the highlights are that the, the player group at the behest of, of um, uh, Mo, our Idinos, uh, Rocket Ranger, uh, whom I hope gets to return to the game soon, um, he... Um, uh, he actually secured a location uh, that one of the four aspects of Santa Claus uh, built for himself. He, he Mo got the Storm Knight group an entire wing of of this of of his mansion, um, and and they you know they can use it for storage and stuff like that. But it's in Isle. That's that's a problem. Um, but uh, the uh, uh, Lady Pella Ardne uh, also knighted the entire Storm Knight team uh, that participated in that campaign. So they are literally knights within Isle. Okay, not in England necessarily, um, but in Isle. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do something about that because um, uh, you know Queen Elizabeth. In 2017, would she knight our players for saving England uh, from a massive uh, snowstorm um, that was caused by otherworldly people? Probably, but since uh, two of those people were from other realms, uh, the rest from the United States at the time, would she be able to get Parliament to agree to knighting them as knights of Core Earth, um, or at least of England? Okay, we'll have to see. I'm I'm still thinking on that. I've, I've been vacillating on that. Uh, I'm sure that there will be some way to make it happen in the near future. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay. Uh, videos kept separate. I think I've gone through my list. So that's the night before Christmas. Um, uh, as soon as I possibly can, I will I will go through all 63 hours, or I'll be working on it. You know, a little bit here and there to to cut down 63 hours to two. Okay, and then I'll cut the video in half in shortcut, and then I will go ahead and uh, make it so that. Uh, you're all able to view it. it. It will probably, I don't know if it will go into the actual Torg Eternity channel or if it'll just be out on its own. Uh, I'll figure that out as I'm going along, but all of you will be able to view these things uh, and and uh, and we'll go from there. Um, if you've watched this long, thank you for watching. I know it's been really long, but I thought it was not fair to leave all of you, including my own players, sorry guys, out in the cold with this. But it's been a long time trying to decide this. Uh, I'm one of those people that needs to do things in, in the most linear fashion possible. So I'm really going against my own personality with all of this. All right, so uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to try and, and start working on Curse of the Gaia Bolga on uh, Monday, and, and, uh, and I'll get you out those videos. Uh, sayonara. See you later. Bye-bye.